Can you um go ahead and tell me? I'm gonna go ahead and start recording our conversation back and make sure we keep up what's going on. Can you tell me what happened last night? Um, I got pulled over around about like one thirty, I guess. Um, I was going to a part after party, and I was leaving the part with my friends and stuff. And I do admit that I was speeding, and um, that's why I initially got pulled over. For. And he came to the car. He was like, he was already like, yeah, half still together. Like, I don't know. And my friends in the back seat, they was just like talking, just kept talking. So I was telling them to be quiet and stuff. My the passenger seat person was telling them to be quiet. The officer even told me to be quiet. And it got to the point where he even said to them that they didn't be quiet. It was gonna result in me going to jail. We've been being put in handcuffs. So you gonna go to jail for them being making noise? Yeah. So several other cops had um pulled up. I seen like I could see the other lights, and I guess they was they told him to tell us all of us get out the car so they could check us and search the car. And um and um um after that. My friend in the back, Tatiana, she was saying something. It was kind of irritating because I just needed her to be quiet, like, so they wouldn't, like, just start being extra. So by that time, I heard him say, get out of the car, but I'm not paying attention to see if he's still standing there. So out of frustration, I kind of, like, I opened my door a little forcefully, but not, like, to the point where I'm, like, about to hit somebody, you know? I'm just opening, like, you know how somebody's mad, they swing their door open? Right. I didn't, I wouldn't think that he would still be standing in front of like standing directly in front of the door, she's telling me to get out of the car. So I didn't see that. So by the time I felt him, I looked. Before I could even say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it, like my bad, didn't know you there. He was already like in the car, like basically pulling on my clothes, and I'm scared. I'm, I'm like trying to tell him, stop, like, but you can't tell a cop to calm down because they're not going to listen to you. So he ended up like coming, like, I seen the point, I seen her phone says, and then he just swung, he hit me in my mouth. It's like, I could instantly like taste blood. In my, and I've been in a video, you could hear me say like, he just punched me in my mouth. And then the other people were sitting in the back seat, so they seen it. And the guy was recording, I didn't even know none of this. So after that, he snatched me out. He was trying to snatch me out, but my leg got caught up in the door, so like my ankle tight sore. And um, he threw me on the ground. He like just he just put me out my head hit the side of my car door and then he smacked the ground and then another cop i can't even remember his face i don't even know who it was i felt another hit on the side of my face which caused my head to smack into the concrete that's why i got the um the scratches on the side of my face and um after that i kind of just curled up because at that time i didn't even feel no more hands on me i just curled up and i was just like why are y'all hitting me and stuff, and then I could hear my friends from the other side of the car saying, what is they doing to her, what is they doing to her? And after that, it's like, that's when they started, like, pulling on my arms, they put me in handcuffs, and now, like, I feel like, like, my shoulder, my shoulder got some nerve problems, now I got to go see a doctor for that, and, um, yeah, yeah, it's just, yeah. Let me ask you this, when you say you opened the car door, were you instructed to get out the car? Yes, ma'am. So they told you get out the car. You open the door to get out the car. And when you open the door to get out the car, the police officer hit you. Yes, ma'am. Who was the officer that jumped through the window of the car? I tried to look on my paperwork. His name wasn't on it. Um, but my friends did tell me that the officers called him Taco. What made Taco jump through the car window? Because... Taco, he already he had hostility bent up in him because of my friends in the back seat not shutting up when he was telling them to. So it kind of reflected off on me the entire time. Like his attitude reflected off on me because of what they were doing. Were you placed under arrest on last night? Yes, he arrested me for um, reckless driving and assault on a police officer. And I got to the magistrate um, office and I wasn't read no rights, none of that. Got to the um, they didn't tell me what I was being charged for before I got in the car. None of that. I just know I was being transferred to the jail. And um, I got to the magistrate. Then he let the police officer talk first. And as he was telling him about the door situation and how I assaulted him, the magistrate, you can look on his face like something went right. And he was like, "Can you explain that more?" And the cop was just like, "He, 
couldn't really say nothing. So it was my time to talk. As I'm talking to Magistrate, he actually got off the paper and said, you didn't, she didn't assault you. You know, that, that was an assault. You had no right to charge her with assault, basically. So I walked out on a $3,000 bond. Um, I got to go to court on the 14th and have obstruction of, ju- obstruction of justice with no threat, no fight, and reckless driving. Wow. So, so they, he actually yeah. tried it. The police officer actually tried to chunk up charges on you when you went downtown after they assaulted you. Yes, ma'am. And the magistrate told the officer she's not going to charge you with assault because you didn't assault him. Yes, ma'am. It, and, was, a, it was a man. It was a guy. And that's the same way I felt. If he told you got the car and you opened the door, then why he's standing in the way of the door? Right. How did this make you feel like... What was going through it, your head it, last night? It's just every time I, just, I try to cry, so right now I'm kind of holding back. Um, it got me like I really don't feel safe. The only place I feel safe is at home. Everywhere wow. I go, out, I'm looking, I'm taking my hand on my shoulder. Wow. And then it, it, it's just, it, I just, it, it, it was just for nothing. He did that for nothing. I got a charge for nothing. I do admit that I was speeding. That's the only thing I should be at fault for. Look at my face. Like, I don't. I, I just felt helpless. Like, I couldn't do nothing for myself. Or if I tried, it would have been worse. Wow. So I just better let it happen to me. Wow. So you was attacked <laughs> last night by grown men. <laughs> They're supposed to serve and protect you. They beat you last night. Baby, don't cry. Um, I'm going to stop this. For- I already struggled with mental illness, depression, bipolar. This is his ass. That's just wrong. Do you live here in Norfolk? I almost had to commit suicide like two months ago for my birthday. And then people wonder why I be so hurt, why I be so down. Like, I, I feel like that's what I do. Baby, don't cry. I want to come see you. Where you at? Where you at? I want to come see you. Where you at? I live in the Virginia. You, I was just visiting. I don't even live up there. You was just visiting here. Sit, yes, sit, text me your address. I'm coming to see you right now. Okay. Text me your address. All right. I'm coming. I'm driving from Virginia, North of Virginia to come see you right now, okay? Okay. All right. I love you. Don't you cry. I'm coming to give you the world's biggest hug right now. Text me your address, and I'm on my way right now. I just want you to drive. You, it's okay to cry because crying is healing to the soul. I'm coming to give you that hug that you need to let you know you're not here by yourself. I have a wonderful attorney by the name of Amina and Willard, and she loves cases like this. I'm going to get in contact with her as well. So I'm on my way right now, okay? Okay. All right. You're welcome, my love.